Hello, my name is Mitch and I draw Blood Force, and today we are moving on with the Revenge of the Sinister Six story. That's, that wasn't supposed to be a tongue twister, but it was, apparently. Uh, this is Spider-Man number 19, uh, adjectiveless Spider-Man. And before we get into it, if you enjoy the channel, if you want to maybe support me a little bit as an artist, uh, if you open up the description, there's a couple of links there for my Patreon and my Instagram. After that, just hit the like, hit the subscribe, hit the notifications, you know the deal. All right, so, Spider-Man number 19, and like I said, we're moving on. Uh, so what happened last time? Uh, a fair bit, but uh, anyway, the end of the uh, issue was Sandman and the eventual Sinister Six. So him, Vulture, Electro, Hobgoblin, and Mysterio were all going to jump um, Dr. Octopus. Spidey was waiting in the shadows. He was actually watching Sandman's back, and then somebody was lurking, and maybe gonna, like, mix things up a little bit. Who could it be? Uh, I guess it's the Hulk. This isn't a great cover. I gotta say. It's, it wouldn't make a bad leading splash page. The cover? Eh, eh I mean, yeah, it, it's fine. It's just, you know, last one was pretty good. That's like a, that's like a cover. You know, it, it, it sells the book. This, I mean, you know, we do know what we're gonna see in the book, so that's something. And of course, Eric Larson continuing the tradition of doing little doodly faces in the bottom left corner that Todd started. All right, so starting off with another splash page. Good Spidey pose, very Spidey-ish. And he's distracted by, well, you know, his spider sense, which is alerting him to something creeping around the warehouse watching either the Sinister Six, or Spidey, or both. And the uh, Freaky Five confront Dr. Octopus. And no double page spread in this one, but we're going to see in a minute that uh, there is a good reason. So this is actually going to be a pretty quick read. Fairly straightforward. The rest of the Sinister Six attack Dr. Octopus. Sandman sneaks in, and he's like, what are you doing here? Almost as if he wasn't expecting him, but was expecting the others. Just strange. And gives him a little, yeah, you know, I, I'd be careful. Remember that family. And it's like, you already got the family. I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. And Sandman believes him off the bat. Because, uh, yeah, that that's, that's fairly, seems fairly sincere. But that means it was you. You blew up their house so I'd help you in your revenge scheme. I know the truth now. And you're going to, and he gets turned into glass by Dr. Octopus, which is something apparently he's done before. In Amazing Spider-Man number 339, which would have been yeah, just like a couple of years before this. Not sure why this needed the panel borders, but sure, why not? And that sort of calms the rest of the Sinister Six here as he's about to smash Sandman. And that's Spidey's cue to jump in, because remember, he was back up. And again, good shot here. Uh, you know, Larson just knows how to draw Spider-Man. Better than most people, I would say. I would say better than Todd. He, he might be uh, the best like, Spider-Man artist in terms of getting the, uh, the the movement down. And I kind of like this bit here. He's like, you're out of your league this time, you costume cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then he has to ruin it because he has to keep saying more quippy one-liners. So while he's, you know, he, he actually makes kind of short work of the rest of the guys here. And just knock over Electro and Mysterio fairly quickly. Does get a hit in on Hobgoblin, but I guess that doesn't take him out. Takes out Vulture fairly easily, as you think he would, because Vulture's like a fucking septuagenarian or whatever that fuck. And while he's dealing with him, Hobgoblin recovers rather quickly, sneaks up and throws some gas at Spider-Man, throws gas at him. I guess like a, like a capsule or something, sure. And turns out that gas actually turns off Spidey spider sense. So that's a problem. And uh, Spider-Man, I like this. You know, he, he immediately goes, okay, I got to get the fuck out of here now. <laughs> I cannot do this without spider sense. So he puts a tracer on Hobgoblin and just like, get out of here. Come back later if I get in the mood for multiple fractures. And that is when the Hulk decides to make his entrance. 
And I don't mind the Eric Larson Hulk. He's not my favorite. It's tough to beat uh, the Dale Keown Hulk, although Art Adams is pretty close. But Eric Larson's isn't bad. That said, he writes him pretty stupid. This is, of course, the uh, new Amalgamated Hulk, who's, uh, you know, strong as the regular Green Hulk and smart as Dr. Banner and uh, a little bit attitude And it's tough coming from... Because you're used to Peter David doing the writing for the Hulk, and you go from that to Eric Larson writing. He doesn't really get it down. And under Peter David, the Hulk is uh, he's a little bit wordy, and he's sassy, and he he enjoys the fact that he's, you know, he's got Banner's brain, but he's bigger than everybody at this point in time. With Eric Larson writing him, it's more like he's just kind of a generic big guy who's a bit smarter than usual, I suppose. He, he doesn't even really come across as that, actually, thinking about it. So, like, you know, nice of you to drop by. I couldn't sleep. What were you doing up on the roof earlier? I was looking for my frisbee. And say, actually, the Pantheon sent me to stop Ock after Delphi foresaw him taking over the world, but I can't tell Spider-Man that. Okay, so now we know why he's there, at least. But, like, his dialogue fucking sucks. Flicks Electro away. That's fun. More fighty stuff. And then Doc Ock gets his tentacle around Spider-Man's neck, and that's kind of the end of it, because he doesn't have a spider sense, he's not prepared. And Doc Ock kind of just smashes him around the room. And he gets torn up pretty quickly here. So Hulk cleans up the rest of the Sinister Six while Ock is busy with Spider-Man here. And leaps for Doc Ock, reasoning that uh, physically Ock's a normal man, one blow to the head should end this, which I always remember <laughs> reading that and going, yeah, <laughs> how come that never happens? I'm sure it probably does. And just when he leaves, Electro fires a lightning blast at him, which casts a huge shadow over Doc Ock. And the arms apparently can act at the speed of thought, and he doesn't need to be able to see him. He can just grab him. Tosses away, Spidey. Good shot. And this is a bit of a source of contention, I feel like, between Peter David and Eric Larson, <laughs> who do not like each other. I'm not sure why at this time. I feel like this might be the start of it, actually. Basically, Doc Ock has. The Hulk wrapped up, and Eric Larson contends that because the Hulk has no leverage, he can't do anything. And Peter David, of course, had the Hulk fight Dr. Octopus not too long after this, and beat the living shit out of him. <laughs> Basically, just saying anyway, he wrapped up his arms, and he kind of, you know, just kind of like, like that, and grabbed the arm, and pulled him in, because he's, you know... he. The, the whole thing with the Hulk is that he's stronger than everybody else. He's stronger than whatever you come up with, including adamantium arms. But, you know, for the purpose of this, I guess it's fine. Uh, so, and just to demonstrate how powerful Doc Ock is now, I guess Peter David never really liked Doc Ock. Must be. Doc Ock beats the shit out of the Hulk and throws him away while the police are uh, surrounding them. So, Ock has a fantastic car of some kind. And he's like, I suppose you'll be wanting to escape? And he's like, okay, Doc, we'll join you for now. And they zoom out of there. We get Electro's Thought Bubble. And the money you paid me earlier to recruit these creeps puts me ahead of them. So, that's what the deal was there, at least. Which doesn't have anything to do with Sandman. But, uh, you know, you get the impression now that Electro probably blew up the Casada's house, so that Sandman would join them to kill Auk. Oh, and they decided to take Sandman with him just in case. So the plan now is to go and raid an arsenal of weapons in another dimension so that they can fight a war. There's no real indication of why they would need to do that. But sure. And that was pretty short, right? 
they point out here that was about 12 pages. And it's like, what the fuck is up with that? Well, around this time, there is a Great Oakland Fire back in October. So that would have been, I guess, when Eric Larson was doing this. That far in advance, eh? All right. And Eric Larson's house burned down. So, you know, they, they reassure you that, yeah, everybody's fine, but everything Eric Larson owned went up in flames, including all his drawing stuff. And what he doesn't mention is including every Savage Dragon comic that he ever drew as a child. But that's, that's a bit of an extra, I don't know, just turn of the screw. You know, if you've ever, you know, I'm, I'm sure a bunch of you made comics as a kid. And if you make comics now, I mean, you know, you probably have a bunch of those ones from when you were a kid. I know I do. I have a few anyway. <laughs> and Eric Larson in particular seems to have kind of treasured his childhood comics. And yeah, no, they're all gone now. All up in smoke. But, uh, I mean, you know, he, he's, he's drawn a few more since then, so it's probably okay. So, in the meantime, we're going to get a backup here with Spider-Man again versus Diablo, who's a, an alchemist guy, which is very, very different. But, I mean, they needed a story real quick. So, Diablo, <laughs> you know. So this is written by Terry Cavana, drawn by Scott McDaniel, who I'm not a fan of, uh, at this time at least. I don't really know what he draws like now. I'm not sure if he's still drawing comics, to be honest. But uh, this would have been when he was just starting out. There's some parts of this that are okay. Um, and some parts I, I don't like... He does, he does, he likes to do a very angular style. Actually, I think this is before that really kicks in, but you can see like the beginning of it and stuff like this. So, uh, Peter and MJ are at an exhibit of some kind, and there's this new find. This is the Diabolique exhibit. And they're going to open it right here during this tour. Very exciting. Now, that's how they open it. The guy in charge of the museum just kind of goes, Hey, guys, check this out. Cranks it open there. In case you ever wonder, you know. And Peter doesn't give a shit about this uh, alchemy bullshit. Because he's all about, you know, modern science. So, the history of science. No, 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 no. I don't give a shit. <laughs> that doesn't really strike me as a scientist, I gotta say. But, anyway. Peter's spidey sense goes off, doesn't know why. Turns out it's probably this thing that has eyes and shouldn't have eyes. And weird twisty nipples. What the fuck is up with that? It's just Scott McDaniel drawing stuff to draw stuff. But yeah, I mean, like, he's... Ugh, these poses are pretty bad. They're pretty stiff. I got. I mean, you gotta give the guy a pass, because, like, I don't know how fast he had to do this. This is a pretty good one. This might have been modeled. But it feels like everything else. Everybody's way too stiff. So later that night, Spidey swings in. And I like this little sequence, although it is a waste of a page. But, I mean, the point of this exercise is to fill pages. So, well done, I suppose. And we get the Spidey light, which is something you don't see a lot of. And he's going to whip up the window here and smash it. Except beep beep, turns out there's a an inner alarm box. Which he didn't foresee until he was about to get tripped up by it. That's okay though. Uh, and so instead he's going to go up to the roof and sneak in the tunnel. And he's going to do a bishop out of aliens. Which, by the way, is like was like five years before this. Which is weird. You think about what came out uh, five years ago. And it's like... Infinity War and Black Panther. You remember that summer? Yeah, that was Aliens around this time. <laughs> so he manages to sneak in without being detected. Gets weirded out that he's in the ladies' bathroom. That's kind of funny. Almost gets spotted by some guards, or maybe not, but he's going to go up in the ceiling anyway. 
and leap over the big grate here, because thankfully they leave openings at the top of those. I didn't think they did that, but apparently they do, I guess. And l jump down just in time for that jade statue thing to turn into a full demon-y kind of guy. And then all of the statues come to life and start attacking Spidey, because that makes sense. And the security guards come running, and uh, the jade statue keeps transforming, because it would, I suppose. And Spidey keeps knocking these things out, and when they get hit, they turn back into inanimate objects, and he leaps just for in time for uh, something. He's still changing. Probably he should hit it so it turns into an inanimate object. And that's it for this issue. Uh, like I said, it's, uh, it's a rushed last minute uh, filler piece, probably. So you can't judge it too harshly. Again, I've never been a fan of Scott McDaniel's style, though. But anyway, that is it for Spider-Man number 19. And with the, with the shortened book, it makes perfect sense. I mean, with the house fire and all that. It is a little weird th thinking about it in context, though, like what happens in the book, because it's just a fight. And it's like, what was supposed to be here? Because he would have had to pace it out, unless it was supposed to be just a five-issue story. That could be the case. Because uh, um, that Diabolique backup story is uh, two issues. Maybe. Yeah. But that's going to do it for this one. Thanks very much for watching. If you like this video, please hit like, hit subscribe, hit the notifications. Click on the links in the description. They'll take you to my Patreon. That's where all the Blood Force pages go, as well as these videos before they get uploaded to YouTube, usually a week or so in advance. And of course, if you go over to my Instagram, commissions are now open, so I can draw you some stuff. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.